Today in the news, the Intel Raptor finally shows its teeth and AMD's other chips look even more attractive. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Intel. So the company had a pretty amazing comeback when it comes to their uh, consumer line of CPUs. They went from constant and tired 14 nanometer refreshes of the same architecture to, well, 14 nanometers again, but with a different architecture with the 11th generation. And then they had Alder Lake, the 12th generation of Intel Core CPUs, the generation that finally gave AMD a hard time in terms of performance. They didn't beat AMD in everything though, but the price to performance you get from certain Intel CPUs is actually pretty good. So what's next? I mean, AMD is about to flip the switch with Zen 4, a brand new architecture. And as far as we know, Intel's next generation, Raptor Lake, should feature the same architecture as Alder Lake, just with more efficiency cores for some of the models. Well, it looks like there is still plenty of life there for Intel's current architecture. Before I get to the actual leak, just to give you a quick rundown, the 12th generation and 13th generation are both based on the Golden Cove Core architecture for the performance cores or P cores and Gracemont for the efficiency or E cores. Intel just enhances things here and there to give more room for better performance on the next generation. One of the things that we know for Rocket Lake is DLVR or Digital Linear Voltage Regulator. This add-on allows Raptor Lake to use way lower voltages, less power consumption, and of course, lower the temperatures. Another thing is a cache upgrade. The top of the line CPU could feature up to 68 megabytes of cache, a lot less than AMD's max of 96 megabytes per chiplet, but 68 megabytes is still a lot. So now that Raptor Lake should be running more efficiently, thanks to DLVR, they can boost clocks back up to a certain degree to get extra performance. Well, today we got our second leak on a Raptor Lake engineering sample and things are looking all right. By the way, the first engineering sample that leaked was slower than a 12th gen CPU with the same config, so this development definitely inspires confidence. The information comes from userbenchmark.com, which by the way, terrible source for information for comparing AMD to Intel CPUs because of their huge bias towards Intel. I mean, I made a whole video about that. You can check it out up here. But for Intel versus Intel, the benchmark is fine. So this is a mobile chip, a 14 core CPU with six P cores and eight E cores. It's essentially the 13900HK. In single threaded performance, it scored 202 points. And in multi-core score, it got 2052 points. So basically right now it's about 9% faster than its predecessor. In single threaded mode, it even beats the 12700K. Not bad, but Intel said that we would get up to double digit performance improvements here. So what gives? Well, according to user benchmark, this was run on a power saving power plan in Windows, which means that there is still performance on the table and we should change the power plan to get more performance out of the chip. Also, let's not forget that this is still just an engineering sample. Hopefully we'll see as big of an improvement as we saw between Alder Lake's engineering samples and the final releases. That was huge. I mean, look at this. There was only a couple of months in difference between these two Geekbench scores. We still got until September here to get more info on Raptor Lake since it's apparently coming in Q3. Also in CPU news, we got AMD. Now the 5800X3D came out and well, I had a pretty hot take, I guess, on it. In my other video, I said that it just wasn't worth it if you met two out of these three conditions. One, you did more than game. Two, you were buying brand new. And three, you cared about your money. Now, did I change my mind after the reviews came out from Gamers Nexus, Hardware Unboxed, Hardware Canucks? Well, meh. I still think it's an overpriced, non-versatile product for my needs. This is my personal needs. If you're a gamer that specifically plays between 7 
720p or I'll go up to 1440p and you own an AM4 motherboard already, preferably a newer one, and you don't do productivity to any you know serious extent on your computer at all, and price to performance is not the most important thing for you, then the 5800X3D is a great upgrade for you. Now, the reason why I mentioned this is because it seems like other Ryzen 5000 CPUs are getting a price cut. The 5800X3D now costs 30 plus percent more money than the regular 5800X, while never giving you 30% more performance. Gamers Nexus said that the X3D was on average about 11% faster than the regular 5800X, with a low of 3% faster and all the way up to 26% faster. And by seeing as 11% is the average, you can see that the 26% faster is not happening that often. And if you do any productivity work, the 5900X and 5950X have both dropped to about 380 bucks for the 12 core CPU and about 5 550 for the 16 core CPU. That is a huge price drop for that amount of performance and productivity. Now, of course, from Intel, you still have the 12900K, which is once again, a good deal if you need all of that performance. But once again, for gaming, the 5800X3D right now is the top of the line. But hey, it's your money. You do what you want, right? Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you wanna, if you if you plan on buying the 5800X3D or already pre-ordered it. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.